What is up guys? My name is Wolfgang and today we're gonna do a different video than usual. This time we're gonna look at Super Display. This video idea comes from a comment in the Galaxy Tab S8 video I made in which they asked how did this tablet perform using this app. And well, that sparked my curiosity and I wanted to see how it went. Using Super Display, I was able to run my tablet's screen at its max resolution and refresh rate. As you can see here, it has more pixels than my main display. But, um, so you can see here that the resolution is running at 2960 by 1848, which is the max resolution of the tablet itself. And here as well, you can see that it's running at 120 hertz, which is the max resolution of the tablet's screen. Now for the refresh rate, you do have to poke around in the settings of the app on your tablet as uh, by default it will come assigned to a 60 hertz display and you cannot change it from Windows, you can only change it once you're in the app itself. After changing it to 120 hertz, it will be the only option that shows up in Windows. Using this display as a second monitor, I did have to up the scaling by, uh, well, to 150%, as it was getting a little bit hard for me to read text and see icons, but that varies by person to person. So you may have the issue, you may not. Now then, I certainly wanted to do a bit more testing in different applications to see how this could benefit the user. So I wanted to test specifically in three use cases. So the first one I wanted to use was for drawing, and in this case it will be using Clip Studio Paint. Now, once you connect the tablet, Windows and Clip Studio Paint will recognize that there is a tablet connected, or a touch-sensitive screen, in which it will offer you uh, to switch the drawing system to the correct one, in which it can identify the pen as an individual input and your fingers as another. And so... So here I'll be showing a screenshot of what shows up and what you got to do is just select this option here and then another menu will open and make sure to select the one that was mentioned earlier. It should be working now. So just to show a little bit of what this enables, you can use your fingers to zoom to um, move the page around and any orientation you need it to for your drawing. and. If, just to show, you can also pan with one single finger. And once you have it where you want it to, you can use the pen as an input. And it will not be recognized as your finger. Now, by enabling the settings I mentioned previously, you can also make it pressure sensitive using the S Pen as it would be used in drawing tablet, or in a um, drawing application on the tablet itself. So this is a great option for artists who have both a Windows computer and a great tablet, as in this case would be the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra, and don't want to spend money on a Wacom, instead just have a single tablet. Now from my testing, I don't notice any visible input lag, however I am not an artist, so I am not the most, uh, I'm not the most trustworthy or most experienced user to be able to say if it has any visual, visible lag or not, but for my use case, it is more than enough. Also, while using the tablet as a drawing tablet, there is a button here on the top left, which I will show in a black screen, a screenshot in just a second, as it's a bit hard to see um, on video, which allows for different functions of the tablet. So. There are two icons, it can either be a lock icon or a touch icon, or it looks like a finger, something like this. Now, when locked, it will not allow touch inputs to go through, but it will allow for the pen to go through. So for different situations, this can be useful while drawing if you don't want anything, any touches to be misrepresented and mess up your drawing. You can use this to only have the pen be sensed and then once you're ready to move around with it you can turn it back on and here you can uh, do whatever you need with the touch inputs 
So here I wanted to just quickly show the UFO test. It might not be as well visible as it is in person, but this is as much as I can show you. And um, while following the UFO, you can see that it is very well defined, even in the 144 frames per second line, which means it's great for, it could be even used for gaming if necessary. However, it's not my recommended use for this tablet. And the last use case scenario I wanted to show was for video watching. So I have my speakers um, a little bit higher up so you can hear when it plays and when it pauses. This is a video I made of the Galaxy Tab S8 Ultra. And so here we go. Using it for about a month now and I have a few thoughts I want to share. So first of all, about the design. Now not much has changed, especially so as you can see, when I pause and play the video, it runs exactly the same as if, as if it were running on the main display, which is great. Now the one important note is that the tablet does not show up as an audio device, which means you cannot use the speakers of the tablet as the speakers for your computer. Editing Wolfgang here. So after watching the video back again, I did realize it didn't mention how it interacted with the S Pen in normal Windows use. It actually works how a pen would work on a Surface device. So that means that you can do any, pretty much any action as if it were a mouse and it will work very well. And when trying to type into a text field, if you tap the field again, it will show up the uh, ink to write function, which means that you can write down with your handwriting on a specified field and it will translate it to text and that way you don't need to pull up the keyboard or physical keyboard but it is an option now then a few extras i wanted to mention about the application and the use of the tablet as a secondary screen using it is first of all that it can be used either wireless or wired now in this case i only tested the wired version as you can see the cable hanging right here as it will provide the least amount of latency and the best performance. However, if you wish to, you can also use it wireless, of course, accounting for a little bit of latency and a little bit of lag in the video. Now, another plus that, is, that using this tablet as a secondary screen has is that it will always be charging. As it is connected to a USB port on your computer, it will provide uh, either normal charging or fast charging which means that you won't run out of battery on your tablet as you're using it as a second screen, which is a plus, especially once you want to disconnect it and use the tablet normally. Now then, one huge warning I wanted to point out is about burn-in. As this tablet does have a Super AMOLED display, it is prone to burn-in as it is an OLED display. So for example, things like the start menu and this whole line down here, and other icons that will always be present on your screens. So, for example, if you're using it as a secondary monitor for Discord, for example, your group chat icons and names may burn in eventually. Now, for casual use, I do not believe it will be a problem, as it is a tablet that is also made to be used. If the tablet is always used as a second monitor when you turn on your computer, then I can see it causing issues with burn in in the long term. So I do recommend it more for a casual use of a secondary monitor. I wanted to share uh, what annoyed me a little bit about this program. Now the only main issue I had was when setting it up. I actually did not know or did not look up how to set it up. So I only downloaded the app on the tablet. However, you also have to download the drivers to run the tablet as a secondary screen from um, or also on your computer, on your Windows computer, which was a little bit confusing until I looked it up. Now, let's quickly talk about price. So the app gives you a free trial for three days to give it a try, see how it works for you, and if you like it. I personally do like it a lot. Having this option available makes it, makes me start to think that I won't be spending that money on a second monitor, and I will be using my tablet as my second monitor. Also, this tablet being a 14.6 inch display helps it a lot in that category as it is a good, it's a reasonable to good size for a secondary display. 
and being able to change scaling to make it easier to read is also, uh, I recommend it at least. Thank you very much for watching guys. If you enjoyed the video, give it a like, and if you want to watch more videos similar to this one, hit the subscribe button and the bell icon so you don't miss out on any videos I release. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.